right, this is SF Barcast. I am Jeff Cleary. I am Andrew Louder. Andrew, where are we today? Uh, we are at Bender's Bar and Grill for Bender's. the 2015, or I guess 2016, but covering the year 2015, year-end extravaganza special. Better late than never. Year-end episode. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so we're... On this episode, we're going to go over all of our favorite bars that we did last year. Right. I apologize for us being, for this being so late, uh, oh. but uh, you know we had to. We had a lot of research we had to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, uh, and, like uh, I, I managed to like uh, crack a rib, like uh, busting into my own house. Uh, you got really sick. Like yeah, uh, this is. It's we're, not you know, a we're supposed to be attending Sketchfest. That's supposed to be our, our excuse for like. Uh, you know, being like out of it, but like, uh, you know, we, we haven't even been able to do that hardly. So it's not a misery sketch fest here, but like, uh, yeah, I've been sick. And so if my voice sounds a little different, it's because I've been sick. I didn't just throw a microphone on some random wino <laughs> and have them come in here and do this. Ooh, that's uh, make a note of that for the future, though. That's a good that's a good idea. Um, so where do you want to start? Well, first off, we're, we're at Bender's, right? And, and we we did a, a year end special here uh, two years ago, uh huh. And so um, and I think that I think the reason that I like to do like a year end special like uh, you know, at a place like this is because if like if Bender's was in the running with all the rest of the bars, it wouldn't be fair because I feel like I you know, I feel like here. I'd get them a lot uh, give them a lot of awards, especially when the bartenders are serving us drinks and looking at us. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, well, yeah, like, this is the best place ever. Today is uh, Tuesday, and they have a, a Tequila Tuesday special, a uh, shot of uh, Hornitos a, and a uh, Tecate for $6. Maybe they get a Tequila Sunrise special like, ooh. for the passing of, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Glenn that, Fry. That, that guy in the Eagles. <laughs> No, yeah. I know, I know who it was. That's it's the other reason that like we've uh, we've been late is like we, we've just been inundated with uh, celebrity deaths that we have to like worry about. Yeah, and uh, it's like David Bowie. David Glenn Bowie Fry. was a real big one. Like, let me let me kill Meister. Let me kill Meister. But, but David Bowie, like you know, everybody knows Bowie songs. So like, yeah, the he died on a Sunday, and so that whole week, every bar I went to, they're, right. everybody's playing David Bowie, which is totally fine. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, but I only know a little one. predictable, but you know. <laughs> I only know one um, a Motorhead song. That's the Ace of Spades. Oh, okay, yeah. So he died, and now Glenn Fry. And let me just tell you, first person who plays Smuggler's Blues in the bar that I'm in is getting punched in the face. <laughs> Were yes. you ever a big Eagles fan? You know what? Like, uh, um, I think I probably, I probably went through a, a, a short Eagles phase, about as short as my like Doors phase or whatever, where yeah, it's like yeah. you sort of have to like give it a, a yeah. you know. Give it a shot, kick the tires, and see if it fits. And like, uh, you know, I mean, there's there's Eagles songs I respect and like, you know, can still yeah. listen to. Um, yeah. And I mean, you know, I mean, like, yeah, the one thing I guess that makes Glenn Fry's death death a little bit easier is that like every account I've ever read about him is that he's the most blistering asshole that ever lived. <laughs> but well, you know what? Uh, God bless and R.I.P. <laughs> uh, he finally found peace. Uh, well. Yeah, I went through. I like some of the early Eagle stuff, some of the so, seventy soft rock stuff. Yeah, standing on a corner but in Winslow, Arizona, that kind of shit. But that's the kind of shit that like uh, big Eagles fans like don't like. They like the the later, harder Joe Walsh years. No, the, uh, like, like, Steely Dan ripoff years. Believe me, I love you. Don't love Joe Walsh as much as I love Joe Walsh, <laughs> even though he's been sober for twenty years. Um, I heard, I went down this Joe Walsh rabbit hole last night where I was like like watching these videos because I was like, yeah, I know Joe Walsh. He he was like the the biggest drinker, yeah. Like in rock and roll, and then he's now he's been sober for se- uh, for two decades, right? Um, and he was saying that like the problem with the Eagles was that it became something that it was that was out of control, and he doesn't mean right. the partying. Because, but when they got back together, like the record company was like, "Look, you guys got to do another album," and they're like, "Well, we don't really feel inspired to do another album." And he's like, "Well, our the label may go under." <laughs> so then, so they're like, now they're like, oh, it's gonna make their fucking their well, year like, if the Eagles like put it, out an album. It's such a plucky's like, uh, you know, like plucky '80s like a uh, movie like plot line where it's like, oh, can the Eagles save the poor struggling rec- record company? I know it's like we've I know we've been fucking like smaller bands like all of our lives, uh, but can you please do us a solid, and make an album, and so you can save all of us scumbags who work in the music industry. <laughs> Can Glenn Fry or and Don Henley put down the Coke mirror long enough to make another album? <laughs> Tune in and find out. 
All right, let's get to the bars. Yeah, let's uh, get we to can, the bars. On, on the on the next episode, we'll we'll, we'll focus more on all of the uh, horrible death. <laughs> or, oh yeah, we'll definitely. Or we'll get just to uh, uh, you know do a show at Sketchfest. Um, all right, why anyway. don't you why don't you uh, drive this train? What's what's a, what's what category do you want to do first? Okay, well first uh, first category that uh, we should start off with is the best locals bar. And so and I think we all know what's meant by that. I mean, like, yeah, nothing, uh, yeah. you know, racist. See, the problem, the, the, the problem with, like, this category is, is it a best bar to go and meet locals? Or is mm. it a best bar if you're a local? Right, right. Like, it almost like, like, like when I hear the term locals bar, I think of, like, um, they might give you a slightly sideways look, you know, if, if it's your first time in there. Like, but... Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, like the you know, it's 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 the uh, it's your preference, like whether you that you like them to be really exclusionary or uh, or friendly, I suppose. Yeah. All right. So, which which one is yours? Uh, my uh, let's see. Well, uh, my my first pick. Um, well, I guess I I I'd like three listed, but I'll, I'll just I'll just uh, to save time and energy, uh, I'll just uh, talk about my my top one, and that was the page. The page. That's which, a good uh, one. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Like you. Uh, you definitely aren't going to run into a lot of tourists there. Yeah, totally. And like, and it's a big, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good sized bar. And like, uh, yeah, there's definitely like local local character, for sure, in that uh, in that bar. What's uh, what's what's your pick? Applebee's. Applebee's is an excellent <laughs> choice. Uh, is, is TGI Friday on the list? <laughs> <laughs> it has to be right. So basically, it would be the anti of that. I'm actually going to go with an out of towner bar. The out. The oh, wait. bar out of this town, out of this town, uh, Wendell's in, uh, in oh. Martin, Massachusetts. It's, That's... It is the it is a the ultimate locals bar to a fault. <laughs> Probably in that like if you like go in like there was a long time where like they're right down the street from a uh, a college, right? Massive and, college, right? Like and, uh, Wheaton. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like a but a, but a, a not, good sized college, right? right? Like, and like they never wanted to cater to college kids because you know you know <laughs> college kids don't like to drink. Cause fuck them, you know. Like that, it's a market we can live without. <laughs> right, exactly. But uh, they've kind of like loosened it up a little bit there in um, later years because like they're now they're known for their food, but it's still like the locals local bar. <laughs> so there you go. Wendell's. That's so great because I mean like yeah, their their big claims to fa- you know to fame are like their wings. And like you know, I mean, like things that you would think are are, are custom made to like draw you know uh, out of towners to your place. Like right. we have famous wings, and we're next to a college. And it's like, yeah, uh, can we come to your bar? No, <laughs> it's for the yeah, the guy down the street only. We have famous wings. You're not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> famous in Norton. <laughs> go back. To, go back and eat whatever wings are famous in your city. <laughs> Maybe that shit works in Attleboro, but uh, it's not gonna fly <laughs> in Norton. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the next category? All right. The next category then uh, would be the opposite, uh, which is the uh, best out of towner bar. And I guess you could also pick Wendell's for this, but like, you know, in it, but meaning in a different way. Meaning if you if you were coming in from out of town. Well, if I want... wanted to go to a town where there weren't a lot of San Francisco residents, I might go to Wendell's. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, no, okay, but, so, but, so but you know what I mean. Like a, a sort of almost almost like a tourist bar. Like you know, like. Oh. Uh, like, oh, I didn't. I didn't do. Okay, well, I, I have two. So, but look, one of them I didn't understand. But go ahead. What's yours? Uh, my, like mine is like uh, I think Devil's Acre would be a good like. That's a like, good. Like if one. I was going to tell like people traveling here, and I sort of knew that they'd be staying downtown somewhere, like you know, or near, and they'd probably be on like North Beach and Columbus and all that. Mm. So that's a good place to you know. You know, I may go them. with that as well. But uh, my the other ones I had here or. I misunderstood the question because oh. odd job. I I was gonna put odd job because I was thinking if you were in from out of town, you wanted to see a cool bar. See, that's still that's a good choice that's, though. The odd job would be a good bar to go. Yeah. And then I had another angle on it where if like you were out in from out of town and I didn't want to see you, I right. would send you to Blondie's. <laughs> <laughs> so take your pick. I, yeah, I, actually, think, I think those Devil's, are both uh, equally valid. I think. I think Devil's Acre is a good one because it's in the middle of North Beach. Yeah. And it's brand new. It's kind of all, like, buffed up. Well, I think, like, well, also, like, the anchor, uh, the anchor, uh, uh, you know, uh, next to the ballpark. Like, that's a good place to send, like, that's uh, a good you one. Know, the, uh, the, uh, tourist friends. What's the, the yard. What's the one down in um, uh, Hunter's Point we did, the, the draft house? Oh, Harmonic uh, Brewing Company there? Yeah, that's, like, no, not Harmonic. The, uh, the one that does... 
prohibition. The, uh, prohibition. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah I don't That's think we actually I'm, recorded I mean, there because we well, thought see, it like, sucked. That would be good for an out of towner, but like, if you're if you're an out of towner and you find yourself in Hunter's Point, yeah. you're taking a wrong turn. Well, and then like, so to, like, I guess like re or, or interpreting it the way that I think that you originally or maybe mis misinterpreted or didn't misinterpret it uh, would like a good choice would also be like the Patriot House. Cause like that, I mean, that's gonna be full of tourists. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know, true. Like, yeah. Like it's if you right really didn't the like the people era. that were visiting, like you'd be like, yeah, you can go to the Patriot House because you won't see anybody I like. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, what's the next category? All right, so like uh, next category, and we'll uh, we'll you know we'll make this the final one of this uh, first segment. Um, is uh, well actually let, let's let's two. skip yeah. ahead to um, best uh, jukebox or music selection. Okay, yeah, uh, here's one that I left blank because I can't remember playing the jukebox anywhere. Yeah, you know what? That's I mean, like, and I think we even talked about this last year, where, like, this is becoming such a difficult and almost, like, impossible category, because you have, like, either an internet jukebox that has access to every song in the world. Right. Uh, or you don't have anything at all. Like, it's being played by a DJ. You know what I would have said? And I think it was our, the, our last um, episode of last year. Yeah. But the Blind Cat used to have a great jukebox, like, a fantastic jukebox. Okay. And then they upgraded to yeah. a internet jukebox where like, like 500 club too right yeah exactly so it's like you know it's hard to know unless you're at like the phone booth and you can see the actually the, the jukebox paging hmm. through and then you're like oh in this I'm, place you can too like, yeah. at, at benders here like, like they, yeah, they're, they're lucky 13 still has an old jukebox so a few would, holdouts really like, yeah so it's like i don't really remember any of this. Yeah, you know what? Like, uh, so Which, what did you have? And I'm well, maybe I think, agree with that. I think I, I also kind of like pussied out or whatever if you want. You know, but because, um, and and you know, sort of put like jukebox slash music and sort of to, tried to remember like bars that we were in where the bartender or whoever was like spinning the hits uh, was playing good stuff. And I remember actually the Harmonic Brewing Company. That guy was playing like a ton of Beastie Boys. Oh um, right, yeah, and yeah. Like, uh, and and like after a while, you know, it just like. It, it was uh, it was so good that it like sort of like rose above the level of noise in the background, like where you were like, oh, uh, this was still great. Yeah, actually, I remember that. But like that, honestly, is like that's their choice. Yeah, exactly. So you it's know? like it, it really does become a hard category. I say I say in future year end uh, um, uh, lists, uh, we uh, take jukebox music category and shit can it. I say we make it optional. If there's like one yeah, that's true, place yeah. where you're just like, wow, that jukebox was great. Right. Like if we cool. do a bar that's just only jukeboxes. <laughs> the jukebox bar. <laughs> right. It's not in the jukebox the district. Um, the problem, like, when I was, I was at the Lucky 13 recently, and they have, like, a, a jukebox that you, obviously they have taken a lot of time to make. They make their own, um, like, CDs. Yeah, yeah. And, but the thing, the problem is every CD is a compilation that they made. Right. So, like, you're not looking at whatever, 70 CDs. You're looking at 70 yeah. CDs with 20 songs each on it. Right. And it just takes forever for you to, like, find something. Yeah, so true, it, yeah. Like, uh, pro tip for all the bars out there. Don't do that. <laughs> and also, I don't know, have better jukeboxes because <laughs> this is becoming a dinosaur of a category. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I remember the gas head having good music, too, but I can't even... I, I don't even know why I think They don't that. have a jukebox, so if they had... I must have been playing it, too, so... Yeah. Oh, well. All right, what do you say? Why don't you uh, take a quick break and uh, come back and do some more categories? Yeah, let's do that, and we'll uh, we'll be right back. This is SF Barcast from true. Bender. They got a message for the action All right, and we are back at Bender's for our end of the year 2015 extravaganza. <laughs> Brought to you by Hellman's Mayonnaise. <laughs> Brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> Go build your fucking website or something. Um, so what is our next category, Andrew? All right. So now we get into old bar. Old bar. Once again, what are the, what are the parameters of the, of the category? Uh, again, I old the, people like, bar? Or <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we do a lot of uh, uh, screwing around with uh, you know, the, the definitions of the category. So you know, I'm going to say define it however you like. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, for Old Bar, I have, and this is sort of a sign of the times, mm -hmm. because I remember when it opened, uh, but, or, I have Delirium. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's... I mean, it's, the thing is, like, I remember when it wasn't Delirium, I remember right. when it was the Albion, but, like, now that everything's, so much has changed in San Francisco, I right. see that as, like, oh, yeah, it's kind of the old granddad of, of the, uh, 
the neighborhood. That's a, yeah, that's, a, that's a good choice. I think uh, I, I, I struggled a little bit. Uh, I, uh, I like the, sh uh, the showdown a lot. And that's like, yeah, that's oh, a yeah. place that's been there for a long time. And then, but I finally, uh, I, I was thinking uh, Grant and Green. Grant like, and Green's is, uh, a good one, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Like, yeah, it's been there for goddamn ever. And, like, doesn't seem like it's changed very much at all. Yeah. I mean, the Delirium hasn't changed at all. <laughs> yeah, you know, it really <laughs> hasn't. Okay. Not. I mean, the, yeah, they changed the name, but literally everything in it remained exactly the same. I heard in the new, well, in uh, the next couple of weeks, there's going to be a new comedy show there uh, put together by Brandon Gardner. You don't who, say. Yeah. Uh, so, and, like, it's kind of sad about the comedy scene in the mission now because uh, the dark room went down. Right. And went dark. Uh, now uh, Cinecave is gone. Oh, it is. It's oh, about oh. to be gone. Oh, that's, yeah. that stinks. So oh, there's wow. like this huge vacuum in the mission where right. we used to like have a lot of good comedy shows. So hopefully that uh, open mic will help fill that vacuum a little bit more. And uh, more yeah, to exactly. come on that when uh, once I hear more. Um, yeah, for sure. What do, what do you have for a new bar? Uh, new bar. Let's see. And, new and bar. <laughs> again, like, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, something is probably several years old by the time we get to it. But, uh, uh, you know, it's. It's it, it, you know, if we've gone in the last year, it's new to us, damn it. So, um, but my uh, my choice was uh, the Gas Head. Oh yeah, that's like, a good one. I like yeah, the yeah. Gas Head a lot. It was uh, yeah, I like that bar. A quality bar. By the way, didn't uh, she play Catwoman? Uh, Julie Newbar. Uh, yeah, I think so. Julie Newbar. Uh, <laughs> um, and actually, I, Odd Job I think was on that list for me too. Like uh -huh. I like Odd Job a lot. I, I, yeah, I don't know how old uh, Odd Job is. It's a bar I never go to. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go with Victory Hall. Victory, okay. It's yeah. a very, uh, it's, a, it's a new bar. We actually had a sketch fest after party there recently. And nice. the, my only issue with Victory Hall is that, like, I wish I lived closer to it or I wish it was closer to me because mm. it's over by the ballpark. Yeah. And I'm sure they do great. They, they have great food. Right. They have a uh, great, uh, great location if you're going to the baseball game. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. if you're, if it neither, like, if you don't just, like, happen to be in that neighborhood. Right. You know? Like I hear, uh, was it like Little Skillet or whatever that's that like is, next to it that's supposed to be really good? Yeah, like they, they, they bring do food the food. In. Yeah, yep. and uh, um, do they still do like live music there, like Three Thirty Richie's? I don't too, think or? so. No? I don't yeah. know. I, like, I mean, it doesn't look like they have a space for it anymore. Yeah. Speaking, I, like, I mean, we can. Uh, I guess I guess we already did music, but like I, I was going to uh, um, uh, just a, a really quick plug for uh, speaking of Three Thirty Rich or what is now Victory Parlor, um, the uh, the uh, uh, what the hell's the name of the festival? The, uh, um, the Sk pot, um, pop fest. noise. No, no, pop oh, noise. Oh, oh, noise pop. Noise pop. There we go. There we go. Um, <laughs> and uh, 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 your buddy uh, and our buddy uh, good friend. and his band Film School will be uh, will be playing uh, during nice. this. And oh, so, uh, absolutely. Yeah, they're getting the band back together. They are. So uh, check that out. Yeah. Um, oh, but, uh, did I did I already say what my uh, yeah my my, my favorite Yours was Gashead, right? Gashead. Yeah. That actually I I like Gashead. Cool. All right. What do you say? Like, uh, okay. Since this is segment two, this sports segment, um, we'll uh, we'll uh, skip ahead real quick to uh, sports bar, and then maybe we can uh, actually talk about real sports that are going on right now. So, uh, what did uh, what did you have for uh, best sports bar of the year? Um. Well, I remember like we did steps this year, and I was mm -hmm. like, that's not gonna be my best sports bar. <laughs> <laughs> I, God, uh, I hope not. I think I'm gonna go with the J and B Club. JB, uh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. we watched uh, a uh, one of the Warriors like championship games over there. Right, right. And they have uh, it, it just like the, the whole place was packed for the game, mm. and it was just like a bunch of locals. So cool. uh, that that was like one of my fondest memories of watching sports while we were doing the the show. Nice. So there we go, JB, which I believe is on what twentieth over by Petrero. Yeah, something like that. I think New York or something. Um, Anyway, uh, mine was uh, Danny Coyles, um, which uh, yeah, oh, is, yeah. is, is, is uh, semi-decent. Either that or uh, maybe I, I, I could be swayed uh, to say the Connecticut Yankee as well. Um, <laughs> I like how you're, you're like, best sports bar. Yeah, it was semi-decent. <laughs> <laughs> like, best gonna, by default. We're going to like rename the category uh, semi-decent sports bar. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your uh, most decent bar the, of, the, of the year? <laughs> when I was a kid. Like decent B was like this word that all the kids were using. Where oh, it's like, like oh decent. yeah, oh man, that was wicked decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Like, sort of like it existed at the same time as like bitching. Exactly. Just get that. <laughs> if you heard Tom Sawyer by Rush, it's wicked decent. <laughs> you heard Tom Sawyer by Rush in a Camaro. 
<laughs> um, did you watch any football games last weekend? Uh, well, yeah, I watched the uh, I watched the Seahawks game, and that was uh, that was depressing. Um, I get, uh, Dude, yeah. What the fuck, Seahawks? Why do you sp- why do you spot the other team thirty one oh, points like they just, at halftime? They, like they came out like looking terrible, but then like yeah, then completely shut them out the second half. So like I know yeah. exactly. Well, <laughs> like, yeah. well, why don't you show? And now these people are saying that like the Seahawks, they, you know, they they got basically railroaded because they had to play at ten thirty Pacific time. Uh, whatever. I don't, I don't. I don't really buy into any of that now. Because I mean, I think that like that was a great argument, like you know, 20 years ago when they were flying like coach on Western Airlines. But it's like these guys like can stretch out as much as they want on a, on a flight. It's like better than being in their house, probably. Yeah. I mean, thing thing about the Seahawks, like I like I thought they could have won that game, mm. and actually a lot of the bookies thought they could have won too. But like they just didn't show up in the first half. Yeah, completely. I feel like they they, they do that a lot though. Like Seattle, yeah. it's almost like. They're coasting on what they were two years ago. Right, and you're like, right. Like, you want to, like, if I was, like, Pete Carroll, I'd be like, look, hey, guys, you're good, but you're not as good as you think you are. Yeah, exactly. You can't be yeah. fucking, like, not scoring any points in the first half and then coming back and winning all these right. games. At some point, it's going to, like, catch up with you. With you. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and I, and I watched, uh, I guess, uh, some of the uh, uh, the Denver game. I did. I, I, I couldn't really get too excited about that game, but like uh, that game um, was ridiculous. <laughs> like, like the Steelers should have won that game. Yeah. All right. How about what, let's have some predictions for this weekend? Okay. Okay. Uh, we have the, the pa- uh, Patriots game was obviously really good, and the, uh, the the other game was just fucking bananas. The uh, that Packers uh, um, Packers Cardinals game. Oh like, yeah, that was ridiculous. Like that, <laughs> the whole uh, hail mary at the end, and then uh, you know, and then they just like let Larry Fitzgerald like fucking bust him like get right down the middle. For- Absolutely insane. So this week's games, uh, Den- uh, New England goes to Denver to play. New England's a three-point favorite. What are you thinking? Uh, that seems fair to me. I don't. I. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think Denver's going to be able to score that much on on New England's defense, and like, and you know, Patriots Peyton will Manning. probably get like at least you know twenty one, twenty eight points or something. Peyton Manning looks terrible. Yeah, he does. He looks awful. I mean, I think the if the Patriots do well against the run, they should cover that pretty easily, or at least win the game. I mean, but help. you know, if you win the game and you don't cover, what's the fucking sense of even getting up in the morning? Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Well, if you if you think of it like the metric that people say that the bookies make it's like if you're the home team you you automatically get three points so the fact that the patriots the, the road team is so it's like are really giving up points the bookies are basically saying that they think the patriots are a six point favorite on a right, neutral right. field um and the other game arizona is going to carolina right. and carolina is a three point favorite the home team. So once again, if you're going by that metric, yeah. like the bookies are saying, this is a pick 'em game. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Like, I'm going. I, th- I think I think Carolina is like. I mean, I, I, you know, actually, I, I take that back. I think uh, I think Arizona will win. You think Arizona will win? Yeah. I think they're just. I think they're actually more talented, and that uh, like Carolina does have a, a problem like closing games out. I think like you this know, is if, where we if they're not ahead by like you know twenty. 24 points, they you know, they can easily be caught. I think Carolina wins and they cover. All right. I do. Like um, Arizona played a tough game last week. They could have easily lost that game. Uh, they were lucky to be home. Uh, Carolina really made quick work of Seattle in the first half and then decided to shut it down. <laughs> um, but I, you know, like. Carolina has the MVP of the league. They're at home. They have the best record in the league, and they have like the most Pro Bowlers. So I'm like, they're still getting like no respect. So I'm right. going to go. I'm going to take Carolina and New England in a repeat of that Super Bowl that the second uh, New England Super Bowl. That they oh, won. It was it 2001, 2002? 2002 or 2003? I don't know which one of those. Oh, you know, I know exactly what. Yeah, it was. It was. It was in 2004. It was 2004. Like, yeah. Okay. So a uh, re. Is that Jake Delhomme against uh, Jake Tom, Tom Brady? Yeah, so um, that that's my uh, Super Bowl pick. And you're going to go New England and Arizona. Uh, I will go New England and Arizona, yeah. All right, well, there you go. And that's that's going to be in San Francisco, right? Or in, I'm sorry, in Santa Clara. 
It'll be ah, what a fucking stupid move. Oh, and it's gonna be a mess too, cause like they've got all these events going on in like downtown San Francisco, but it's like a goddamn hour away to get to like Santa Clara. Do you have like, any hot takes on the hiring of Chip Kelly for the 49ers? Oh god, not not, not at all. Like uh, like good best of luck to him. Can I tell you like a lot of my San, my 49er fan friends? Yeah. They're not happy about this hire. Really? <laughs> yeah, because they're like they wanted like a clean slate, and basically. Chip Kelly coming in will mean that they'll probably he'll probably go with uh, Kaepernick because uh, Kaepernick okay. is a he's a he's a uh, spread quarterback. Right, right, right. So I don't know. It could be just more. I mean, and also Chip Kelly just basically like ran himself out of Philly, and the Niners yeah. are like, "Ooh, you want to run yourself out of here? <laughs> Come on over." <laughs> so, we have, like, we have a great environment for running coaches out. Just ask uh, the last five or six. All right, you want to take a break? Yeah, let's do, do that. Do you have anything else on the sports? Sports uh, report? Uh, no, just I mean, the, the, the Warriors have lost, I think, four games already. Holy like, so, fuck. So this season's a fucking you know, <laughs> disgrace. Although they, there was like this big game last night with them playing in uh, Cleveland. It was humiliating. Yeah, and like they, they like, destroyed Cleveland. And yeah, like, Cleveland was like talking about how they were disrespected. and like Disrespected? Um, like, well, I what, guess what, what are you supposed to do? Like Somebody asked like, Somebody asked Steph Curry about, you know, hey, you're going back to the place where you won the championship. And he said, yeah, I hope the I hope the locker room still smells like champagne. Right. And then they were like, ooh, ooh, they disrespect us on our court. They're coming oh, in here. Jesus. And they're like, so they're all like ruffling their feathers. And then they go in there and they lose by 34 points. Great <laughs> right. job, guys. Way to take you a stand. could have lost by like 50, too. Like there, was, there, there wasn't like, you know, you know like in the second half, the best player on the court was like Leandro Barbosa. That's how good the the Warriors are, even though they've dropped, uh, heaven forbid, four games. <laughs> right. Like the Warriors, I honestly everybody's saying all that's left in the NBA season is for the Warriors to play San Antonio. Yeah. And then that's it. Like yeah, I mean, it's it's a, uh, it, it seemed pretty unprecedented. Like yeah, you know, for for a, a you know a road team to beat, you know what would you call uh, Cleveland at least the third best team in the in the league. And uh, sure. go, to, to go on their home floor and just utterly like just mop the floor with them is pretty uh, pretty incredible. Whatever. All right, that's been the sports report. We're uh, let's go. Let's take a break and then we'll come back with more of our categories from 2015. This is SF Barcast. All right, and we are back. This is SF Barcast on our year-end 2015 spectacular. Our spectacular extravaganza. I love this bar, by the way. I know, we're, gonna, I know we're talking about other bars, but, like, yeah. I mean, they're playing Ronnie James Dio. <laughs> uh, also, rest in peace. Indeed. Who's, who's left alive, Andrew? Uh, Anyone? <laughs> I, think, I think we've uh, reached that point where they talk about where the survivors envy the dead. Exactly. Now it's all cool to be dead. What's yeah. going on here? Exactly. Now, now what are we left with? Fucking uh, Billy Joel? Do you think when David Bowie... Billy Joel will be dead, like, tomorrow, I bet. I, wow, well, I'm not going to... Okay. <laughs> He'll plow his car into a cancer clinic. <laughs> uh, do you... Like, when David Bowie died, I was thinking about it. I was like, you could argue that David Bowie was the coolest person alive. Yeah, I think you could. I think like, the only other person that would, like, come into the conversation maybe be Prince. Yeah. But even, like... I feel like even if Prince tried to do half of the shit that David Bowie did, people would be like, knock it off. <laughs> and like, yeah, Prince and like everything David Bowie did, like yeah. it was outlandish, ridiculous, and like people were like, yeah, I'm on board. And yeah, like that's never happened. Like, yeah, like it's and true. never will happen again, I don't think. Like Prince has always been sort of like Prince, you yeah. know, and he's great, and he does, he does right. great work. But like David Bowie's like been so many different things. Like I think, the, yeah, the difference between like, in my mind, between Prince and David Bowie, like, I feel like a lot of like Prince's like uh, like you know, idiosyncrasies come from like sort of being self-absorbed, which is fine if you're a genius or whatever. Yeah, right. But like David Bowie never gave off the like you know like vibe of being like into himself. He was just like the fucking coolest. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. You know, was, yeah, like he would just like strut out in a you know goddamn yellow suit and be like, yeah, there's a who's that over there that uh, you know like African model? She'll be my wife. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's really the most interesting, the the coolest, the really the coolest person alive. Now, yeah. now I guess it's Prince's throne. Uh, anybody else like in the running there? Can you think of uh, like for coolest? Uh, I don't know, Ted Cruz. <laughs> sure. I, mean, I was thinking maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, 
Paul Krugman. <laughs> and, uh, George Clooney. That's our, uh, former uh, Secretary of the Treasury, uh, <laughs> Ray LaHood. <laughs> Ray LaHood. Again, with a Ray LaHood. Keeping it good with Ray LaHood. Um, what is our next category, Andrew? Our next category, I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, or, or, or that we've already done this, is um, another sort of uh, category you can interpret uh, however you like, and that's uh, best beer and or drink selection. Mm. You know, it's a tough one. Like, uh, like, you know, what did you have? Because I, I left like, this one blank. Like, like wine for the last year. Um, uh, let's see. I, you know, I, I feel like a cease and desist and odd job. Uh, oh. Both did uh, had good drinks. Yes, I'll go like, with Odd Job because yeah, like they had good. that uh, whiskey sour that we had, and I was just like, I'm just gonna have, like. Mm. Here's the sign of a good drink. You just go, I'm just gonna have one, right. and then you go back to five. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, you're taking a shit in a squad car. <laughs> Next thing you know, yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. It is like I, I like right. because for someone like me who would like for most of the year only drank wine, and I'm not like a wine connoisseur. Yeah, I was just like, oh, wine. It goes in the mouth. Right. Let's just have that. Exactly. Uh, so I don't really go. I don't branch too far out. I kind of. I, like, I almost feel like the. Uh, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I, yeah. But I feel like the uh, um, the era of like super specific, time-consuming artisanal cocktails. Like it's almost coming to an end. Like I, 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 I sort of feel it where it's like people just all at once got tired of it. And we're you, like, I'm tired of waiting, you know, 15 minutes for him to, like, you know, put this, like, you know, uh, ginger shrub into my drink or whatever. You know, like. Andrew, are you predicting that the bubble's going to burst on bullshit? <laughs> well, I think the, the, uh, at least that particular bubble, like, may burst. I think there's still plenty of bullshit bubbles in the uh, greater San Francisco area. Okay, we'll, st- we'll stay tuned on that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, but believe me, I need those uh, bullshit bubbles to keep my house, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, valued high. Uh, what is your next category? The next category I have is uh, best bartender. I have one like r- immediately off the top of my head. It you want to say? It, you want to say at the same time? <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember his exact name. Was it Ray? Roy. Roy. Yep. Roy, uh, Roy at uh, 19th Street Station. 19th Street Oakland, Station. Right? Roy. Yeah, the guy who supposedly has never taken a day off. He. Yeah, like, Runs 19th Street Station. They've and they've never had a fight in there. He doesn't allow cursing, <laughs> <laughs> which I, I'm pretty sure at least twice when he was like talking to us, we probably were like, "Fuck that!" <laughs> it's like, "Yeah, that's a bunch of bullshit." <laughs> uh, like, What's that? A picture of your wife? Ah, fuck you! <laughs> and he told he told he has he's full of stories, like like an old bartender yeah. should be, you know, like he's a dude that like, you know, it's he was telling us stories about working for Sambo's. Right. The, that old like restaurant that like everybody thought had a racist name, and as it turns out, it, it was. Does. <laughs> well, <laughs> it does, but he was telling us he, he was like in on the ground floor with them, right? And it was like two partners. One's name was Sam, and one's name was Bo. Yeah, and they just put it together. I think like, uh, and and you know, God bless him, great guy. <laughs> I think uh, I, I really enjoyed talking to him. Um, a lot of that. I seemed, hear a butt coming on. <laughs> a lot of that seemed like, uh, um, like sort of years and years of, uh, of rationalization where it's like, but I mean, I, I, I'm sure that's true, but I think that the, I think the issue was more that uh, um, Sambo's became a uh, you know, sort of racist stereotype because of their advertising and stuff like that. So it wasn't like, it was like the word Sambo was bad before Sambo's started. I think it's that Sambo's made it bad. Well, the thing is it's, it, like things change yeah. all the time. Like, you know, the NWA. I mean, they had a, they had a uh, uh, you know, their mascot or whatever, their like, you know, uh, I think it was named Little Black Sambo. It was like no, little, it wasn't. Was it, it was. It was a little, you know, a little black sort of like, you know, uh, oh, oh, song yeah. of the South type. Okay, kid. everything <laughs> that, that changes everything. Yeah. I was gonna say like, you know, like sometimes things change and older people like don't recognize it. Like if your internet browser can handle it, uh, I <laughs> do a search on uh, Little Black Sambo. <laughs> exactly, and then welcome to the uh, NSA list that you just made. <laughs> That's right, welcome to the wonderful world of militias. <laughs> uh, but I was going to say that like things change, and a lot. I know a lot of older people like they don't get the memo early enough. Like mm. you know, I've had uh, elderly relatives of mine who have still used the word "colored," right? But like yeah. it, they weren't like racist. In fact, like you in fact, know, they, they think they're, they're like the, the progressive people because like. 
all of their friends like said much worse things. Right. Well, it's like they they, they were big supporters of uh, the NAACP, which is the National Association <laughs> for the Advancement of Colored People. Right. And so they're like, oh, it's got to be fine, right? But then like somewhere along the line, like right. that community decided, no, we don't we don't like that word, and like. This relative of mine didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't reading the right papers, I guess. Yeah, but the thing is, that's like one of those things where you're just like, oh yeah, you know, like old people aren't on the cutting edge. So maybe, I don't know. I'm not. I'm making excuses for this total, this, <laughs> this blistering racist. <laughs> you know, like, when did this turn into the making excuses for racist podcast? I, thought, oh, I guess since day one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, what is our next category? All right, uh, uh, last, last category of this segment, uh, I believe, uh, will, um, and again, like, probably made more sense when we started. I feel like, that, you know, the, given how much things have changed, I feel like uh, we've been doing this podcast for, like, 50 years, and we're like, oh, wait, it doesn't make sense to say best, like, <laughs> gramophone record anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, like, uh, best food. And, uh, you know, I guess, like, some, you know, some, uh, some bars have, like, food, you know, available at them. Uh, a lot of bars don't, but well, uh, yeah, more and more they have like uh, you know arrangements with a local like you know place that uh, cooks for them or whatever like that. This uh -huh. vendors like has great food at it, like yeah, it's like a you know first class uh, little like uh, cafeteria, like you know, yeah. Actually, here. yeah, the bar the the food here is really good. Mm -hmm. Although I remember like hearing from some of my friends, they changed like ownership at, of or whoever's running the kitchen yeah, here yeah, at yeah. vendors. And some of my friends were like, "Oh yeah, man, they totally fucked it up." And now it's totally, it's now it's terrible. I'm like, "Wait a minute, it's fucking burgers, right? Right? Like, <laughs> they still take frozen tater tots and cook them, right? It's like, come on, dude. Like, yeah, let's not get too into like the the foodie culture here. <laughs> or it's like the, the foodie culture of the back of vendors. I used to get 17 tater tots. Now I get 12. <laughs> That's right. So I mean, like, I you know, I think uh, um, the yard at Anchor had like uh, had decent food offerings. Uh, I remember Southern Pacific Brewing Company. I mean, these are all places where I didn't actually order food, but uh, I I know <laughs> from you know from previous or like uh, experience since that they do. Um, but uh, and like I don't know, La Rondaya was another place we went to that has decent food, but uh, I couldn't think of anything else actually. Okay, I'm going with, gonna go with Victory Hall mm. because they have the little the aforementioned little skillet there, Indeed. and they've got a really good. Um, and the kitchen's like right there. And right. every time I'm there, there's like a line for people to like get the food. <laughs> so even though I, I only ate there once, I was like, yeah, I feel like this is that's a pretty good pick. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't, uh, we definitely, I, I don't think we went to a lot of, you know, or any, any other bars where like the food was sort of the star of the, uh, you know, the experience. My honorable there. mention for this category though is, doesn't really, it's not like I'm not, com it's not coming from a position of being a connoisseur of food. Mm -hmm. It is from, I remember when I was at the J&B Club, they have like pizzas there. Mm. And we had been drinking the whole afternoon. And then when they bring a pizza to you right. after you've been drinking right. and you're just, hungry. Might as well be like it's showered in gold. Right, exactly. <laughs> you feel like you've won the Powerball. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and like, I just, I have vivid memories of like how great that pizza was. So, you know. There we go. Like J&B is my, uh, my coming in a Like pizza is probably second. the one. Pizza is probably the one food that is, is most distorted by how fucked up you are. Like, like I okay. No, like, yeah, I, well, I think I mean like there are there is a such thing as really great pizzas, but like there's also many 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 instances where like you're just dying to you know shove any stupid thing in your mouth, and the pizza comes along and it's just you know it's awesome and, and you know, of course it is. Why the, wouldn't it be? The whole concept of arguing or gourmet pizza, right? It just seems so fucking alien. <laughs> like it's like it's pizza, dude, right? Right. But like they get a lot, a lot of play on when um, John Stewart used to do the Daily Show. They have like they used to get a lot of play whenever he would talk shit about the pizza everywhere else other than New York. Or like when uh, I remember him like going fucking nuts because uh, Donald Trump was was eating his uh, pizza with a uh, fork, and like and you'd be like, hey, what are you doing, you fucking New Yorker? Like you're supposed to fold it in half like a uh, gabagool. Like, you know, like, like who would have known that like arguing about pizza is like total like catnip clickbait. <laughs> because he picked up fights with, like, Chicago, and people in Chicago right. were like, that's like, you know, fucking my mother in the ass talking shit about deep dish pizza. Right. It's like, like no, it's like, dude. That's really all you have to do to, like, have a successful food show is, like, roll into any town and, like, claim to, like, do, you know, their food better than they do. You know, or, like, oh, people, like, lose their minds. And <laughs> John Stewart was saying, like, in California pizza, that's not even pizza. Ooh, who knows? That's fucking, that's, like. That's so bad it's off the charts. And I'm just like, whatever. Like Kyle Kinane bit where it's like, uh, I wanted uh, 
deep dish Chicago style pizza. They brought me a cowboy boot with orange juice in it. <laughs> so I don't know, like, so yeah, it's like that old adage where it's like pizza is like sex, where it's like even if right. it's bad, it's still pretty good. But to argue about what pizza is good and what's not, right. although I've, I've engaged in that like many a time. <laughs> There's some. There, there's like a place called R and L's right in my neighborhood that yeah. everybody loves. Right. And I just like whenever someone starts talking about how great it is, I just lose my mind. <laughs> I'm just like, that's crackhead pizza, okay? <laughs> and it's, well, it's terrible. Think, like, if you have like uh, nostalgia based around pizza, that's only like you know, like, like yeah, you have like vivid memories of New York pizza, but yeah, and like I mean, like I would say that Aaron L's is like is a decent like a. Uh, uh, you know, uh, approximation of New York pizza, like, but fine. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the it's the greatest thing in the world at all. Like, yeah, it's like uh, I've had much better elsewhere. Okay, New Year's resolution, people, stop arguing about pizza. Good idea. Fix the world. All right, what's the next category? No, I think uh, I think that's it for uh, this segment. So we can. Uh, okay, cool. We can, right. we can freestyle if you want, or just take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. You can freestyle. You can, you can freestyle during the break. <laughs> All right, this is SF Barcast, and we are at Bender's. We'll be back. Yeah. All right, and we are back. And you know what, Andrew? We are in the home stretch here. We only have four more categories. This is like the last after the last commercial break of the Oscars. Exactly. This is like this when like Tom Cruise walks out, or like right. yeah, where you're like, oh my god, like they dug up the corpse of Mel Gibson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, and it's, you're just like, get on with it. We, we, we it's four hours in. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, but of course, before we do that, mm. let's uh, do a little plug. Uh, there mm. seems to be the Sketchfest show coming up this Saturday. Ooh, what's that all about? <laughs> oh, I don't know, but well, don't ask us. We haven't planned it yet. Uh, it is. Our first live show, and Indeed. it's brought to you by the good people at SF Sketch Fest, and we're going to be doing it at Piano Fight, mm-hmm. which is on Taylor. Uh, yeah, one something Taylor, like yeah. you know. We should know. We'll figure it out before, right? Like 15 minutes before the show, we'll figure it out. Uh, Google Piano Fight, and then just like uh, you know, walk into the Tenderloin and ask everybody there what it, where it is. And it's an afternoon show. So it is 4 o'clock. For Saturday. most of our listeners, that's a morning show. Before, like, <laughs> exactly. was it 4 or 4.30? Four, 4 o'clock, I think. 4 o'clock, like, okay. Right, right on the button. 4 o'clock. Right. And we'll run out of material fight. and start doing Q&A around 4.03. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, yeah, so 4 o'clock in the Tenderloin. Right. Uh, you can see SF Sketch Fest. And uh, if you show up, I will let you touch us. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. It's a free show, but you can get. Um, I'll, I'll put a um, a link to uh, get the tickets, whatever. Yeah, or fantasy uh, like uh, false tickets, <laughs> fantasy tickets, <laughs> fantasy tickets. Uh, yeah, sure. We don't need Indeed. fantasy tickets. We need like reality tickets. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's maybe we uh, could like uh, yeah, all the people that show up for the free show that we're doing, we'll we'll charge them five dollars to get in to see if they really want to get in. <laughs> don't worry, we're not going to pass a hat. <coughs> all right, so. We're down to our last four um, categories. All right. So the you first one, uh, I should say, uh, is uh, the best guest we had this year. We didn't have as many guests as we uh, this year as we've had in years past, but but we still had some uh, quality uh, quality young comedians that are that, that uh, have stood the test of time. And, and uh, this is also known as the Drew Harmon Memorial <laughs> Award, <laughs> best guest award. R.I.P. <laughs> Rest in peace. He was just on like three weeks ago. <laughs> R.I.P. Anyway. Uh, and actually, I don't think we had uh, Drew on this year, did we? Uh, no, we, we did like three weeks ago. At, uh... Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah we did. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I might have just mentioned it. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I think uh, like you know, I, 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 I always enjoy okay, meeting. We'll, we'll uh, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy. I always enjoy meeting uh, new comedians for the first time, and they were two. Uh, comedians that I met for the first time on this podcast, and those are uh, Kevin Weddinghill, who was great uh, on uh-huh. the Grant and Green episode, and my winner, uh, Josh Hola uh, at the showdown. He was a, a delight. I actually, I feel like you've been cheating off my my paper because uh, I was going to go with Josh, but since you went with Josh, I'll go with Kevin. Ooh, <laughs> take <laughs> How that. <about> that? <laughs> Kevin, Kevin's a great young comic, and he's got this fantastic like radio voice. Yeah, I agree. And Josh, well, Josh is also a fantastic young comic, and 
he and he actually works for the radio. Doesn't and he, he works in radio. Right. So um, I don't know. I, I can't really split it up. But like, uh, well, well, it's just like. Let's just be diplomatic about it. You can take Josh. I'll take uh, Winning Hill. I also, I like, honorable mention goes to, I think, Joe Tobin and Barbara Gray. Like, we're both oh, great yeah. guests. Uh, but, uh, you know, better luck next year, uh, Joe and Barbara. <laughs> exactly. Doesn't mean we don't like you. Just, exactly. You, you can always come on again and try for another award. <laughs> uh, what is our next category? Uh, the next category would be the... Um, Worst bar of the year. Ooh. <laughs> there's yeah, there's just so many <laughs> for me. <laughs> this, is, this is the uh, airing of the grievances part of the uh, of, of the podcast where we uh, yeah, we talk about the bars that uh, maybe missed the mark a little bit. This is the only part of being sick where I it actually helps me when I'm being <laughs> sick. Because you hate everything? Because I hate everything. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Like, I came in here. I was, like, looking at the list. I was like, that sucks. That sucks. <laughs> and I realized, yeah, I'm probably just a little over-medicated. <laughs> exactly. What, uh, what, what, uh, what topped your list? Or, 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 or do you have, like, multiple, okay. uh, multiple ones to get through? Okay. I didn't – even though it was my idea to go there, I wasn't a big fan of Devil, Devil's Acre. I can see that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it was nice because like uh, Tobin was there with us. So um, I mean, it, it's that I feel like that is probably one of the more expensive bars that we've been to on the entire podcast. Like, yeah. there's like so much money poured into a place like that. It's really, yeah, and I'm not sure to what end, other than to try to briefly convince tourists that they're in like Barbary Coast, San Francisco. Also, like, they have they do like I do an open mic right down the street from there, and yeah. every once in a while, I'll yeah. after the show, I'll walk by there, and they'll, they'll, they're all like. More than once, they've ha- they're having these private events. Oh, okay. So well. you're just like, dude, like it's a this huge fucking place. It's yeah. Like they're, they're like they love doing private events. That's right. That's where so, the money's at. Whatever. Like it's not like there's not a, another bar right across the street. Um, <laughs> Rick House is a bar that I really was like, wow, I hated that from the beginning. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, if 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 you if you hate a certain kind of of like. You know, uh, precious new, like you know, new made to look old, like you know, like, like oh, aren't you back in like you know the 1800s? Like, except we're charging you twenty dollars a drink or whatever. Like, yeah, it, it's, I can see uh, not liking that at all. Like, yeah, what's the place right up the street from here? The uh, trick dog or okay, or? trick dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is the uh, trick dog memorial uh, category. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Rick House, uh, but you know what? I'm going to go with an old favorite <laughs> just because uh, it's right next to my apartment and they woke me up way too many times. <laughs> I'm going to go with Blondie's. Ah. I, that, that place is, like, I live right around the corner. You, I Maybe I'm just totally biased because, like, I, I live in that neighborhood. I walk by there, and every time I walk by there, I shake my head. I'm like, I'm not fucking going in there. <laughs> like, you know, and, or I see the people in there, and they're, right. just, like, sipping their, like, expensive like drinks and i'm just like Fuck it, does, that it, place. It, it does like it, it has a feel to it where like if cocaine could open like a bar like yeah like if, if cocaine could own something uh it well, would, I would go to that i bar. would go to that bar <laughs> <laughs> uh christ um oh, what is uh, yours uh i think like actually well there were a couple like you know a couple strong contenders were um I don't like what they did to la rondaya at all like i mean like they kind of oh, they, yeah. they sucked all of the fun out of that place and it took like 10 years to do that like, which is like ridiculous oh, <laughs> like that place like remained empty like a, a they build know. the freedom tower faster <laughs> yeah exactly like and uh the, the i think the uh one of the other uh hot contenders was the patriot house of course done by uh our buddy uh, uh john taffer at yeah the, uh, that's a really bar good rescue one show because that that i mean i liked it when it was uh was it royal exchange Oh yeah, yeah. It was yeah, Royal yeah. Exchange before it was Patriot House, right. and I had like friends that worked there. Yeah, I would go there, and it just seemed like really nice. And then like the problem, the biggest problem with Patriot House is that right. you go into it like thinking, oh, this is like something that somebody, some like Hollywood personality came in and improved, and it sucks. Well, yeah, or either that, or if you if you're not even aware of that show, you walk into it and you think, oh, this is something I could probably find in any mall. <laughs> It does yeah. feel it does feel like a mall. Yeah, yeah. that's unfortunate. But my uh, my winner, I think, for uh, my least favorite bar of the year is uh, Steph's Sports Bar. <laughs> Which I, I I I didn't know you were gonna pick this, and <laughs> I mentioned it earlier. 
Like it's uh, wow. What? Yeah, it's it's just yeah. Like every I've, I've been there probably more than you know nine or ten times in, in my life, and like every time I'm like this place kind of sucks. Like yeah, it's just, it's it's just always annoying. Do like you in think some it, way, like do, why do you think it's annoying? Do you think it's like the because like it's it's a it's clearly a after work like kind of douchebag uh, destination. Yeah, but at the same time, it has like no personality. Like you would think that like like what makes a good like sort of you know dive bar a good dive bar is like is is that it, it's sort of like you know is you know uh, soaked in like you know the personality of like whoever like thought this was a good idea. But right. that place doesn't even feel like it has a personality. It's just it just feels like a random like airport bar or something like that. Like, this is like really profound because you and I both like sports, and then right. at Steph's sports bar, there's like a whole wall of like sports uh, screens. Yeah. And so like, you think like we would be like sympathetic to their existence? Oh, I know. Yeah. Like, but they, we're like no, we wanna, really have to work hard to screw that up. We want to wipe it off the map. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd love to see. Uh, yeah. Like. Yeah, when you when you uh, work in like how uh, how pretentious some place like uh, um, One Eleven Mina is, and and then you think like I would ra- I would rather hang out at One Eleven oh, Mina in a, than yeah. I would at Steps, and like absolutely, <laughs> it's like why is that? Like yeah, it shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, but okay, so that's yeah, that's worst. But so okay. thankfully we got that out of the way. Yeah. So now we can like go to, I guess like honorable mentions. Let's do first. honorable mention. Yeah. So basically, you know we're gonna do our best bar after this. But right. you know how we're doing all these lead-ins where it's like, right. okay, best bar. Well, here's some of the bars that I th- thought were good. Right. This category is for that conversation. There we go. Okay, yeah, yeah. so honorable mention. What do you have basically coming in that you would like to mention honorably? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, um, just quickly a few, a few mentions to uh, – I liked uh, – I like uh, Grant and Green. I like Plas Pagal. I like Devil's Acre um, a little bit, um, but my uh, my main uh, my main uh, mentions, honorably or not, uh, are Odd Job. That's a good one. Yeah, which is uh, which is uh, yeah, it's like a, a fun place. Uh, Butter I enjoyed, which I'd, I'd never actually been yeah. to before. That was uh, that was fun in a way that I could see becoming not fun as the night progresses. But yeah, um, 19th Street Bar and Grill. Okay, and uh, and the gas head. Uh, those and so those are my uh, honorable mentions anyway. What, what what are some of yours? I actually had the only one I also had on my uh, list was uh, gas head. Mm. Uh, I had Victory Hall. Okay, yeah. Uh, I had the page. Right. I had uh, Jane B. Jane B. Right. And I had Tunnel Top. Tunnel Top is actually a great choice. Yeah, like yeah. I, I, I meant to, uh, you know, I, I think I thought I had that higher rank than I did. Maybe Tunnel Top is a bar that, like, I never go to, but then when yeah. I go there, I'm, it's like, I'm like, why don't I go come here more? Yeah. But it's like, I'm, I don't, never in that neighborhood. Uh, yeah, it's, so that's, that's yeah, that's too. in, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, Knob Hill. Yeah, yeah. Gashead's in the Mission. The Page is in the Hate. J&B's in Potrero. Uh, Victory Hall is down by the ballpark. I also right. had Blind Cat in there. I don't think okay. I don't know if like Blind Cat like made it like, but it was our last, our right. last episode of last year. Yeah, exactly. Blind Cat's a, a, like a good one. Um, yeah, I, I would put that in there. Like I, I wasn't sure if the the uh, best of uh, episodes were uh, eligible. So I, I don't I don't know like if I have to choose one of these, I might oh, go okay. with J and B. All right. But well, like yeah, think? all of them. So are, are we uh, are we going to take a break before the uh, the, the, the final you one? Or? This is called a tease in the business. All right, well, I know, and we already sort of promised that we would. Uh, All right, let's uh, just go. Let's let's power through. Let's power through it. Why not? All right. So Andrew, <laughs> our listeners deserve better. Now, before you make this decision, before you announce us, right? You have to know that a lot of these bars, their fortune like lay in the balance. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I've, 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 and I've been offered many bribes. <laughs> I, you know, and, we, and I take every single one we of have them. Not taken most of those bribes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not taking any of the ones that I find insulting. <laughs> All right, so Andrew, best bar of 2015 that we went to. That we went to. It, indeed. Uh, it was it was very early in the year, and like it's come up before, and I believe you just mentioned it, and it's called The Page. The Page. The Page. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, every time I'm there, uh, it's, it's an incredibly comfortable bar. Yep. And like, there's something sort of Christmassy about it all year round. 
like it's yeah, you know, like the, the lighting's just right. I like the back portion of it, where like you can like play pool and like uh, hang out in a sort of different part. Yeah, the and back portion has got like it kind of feels like some rich guy's study. Like, yeah, exactly. If your yeah, dad was like a rich guy, right? And he had a study where he would like beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. It's, it's like blood stains and like spare belts hanging around. Yeah, that is a great bar because like they it it's located right in the the, uh, the lower hay. Yeah, and. It is. It's, it's got a jukebox. It's got yeah. foosball for me. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's got a pool table in the back. So it's very, very tourist-free. Like very, yeah. yeah, very local. Like yeah, it's great. Yeah. I so it. I uh, commend you on that. And my, you? I am gonna go for my 2015 SF Barcast Best Bar of the Year. <laughs> I'm going to Oakland. Ooh. I am gonna take 19th Street Station. Good. Good. You know, good choice actually. Like cause oh. that, that place was uh, was and is. It uh, was quality such, establishment. Such a good like time there. It's yeah. like like ne- also kind of like what we were saying about Steph's in the opposite way. Like neither of us are smokers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the la- probably the last bar I think in the world that you can smoke in. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and that didn't bother us at all. In fact, like maybe yeah, yeah. maybe I was like just filled with like nostalgia and <laughs> like uh, menthol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But like, man, that was carcinogens and tar. Exactly. I was like, it's like, come and enjoy the tar. Oh man, I told him to play Bob Seger before I gave him out my (laughs) my best bar. But yeah, and also talking to Roy, right? Like my best bartender. Uh, just a really and like, yeah, like I'm and I'm always like the very resistant person to actually going to the East Bay or anywhere (laughs) outside of the mission. And the fact that like they won me over in one night, right. there we go. And, yeah, well, we, and you know what? Like I think it's a, a a sign of the times, if you will, that like uh, you know that uh, I think a lot of uh, you know a lot of cool stuff is sort of being uh, you know shoehorned out of uh, San Francisco and into Oakland. So you know, like uh, yeah, like uh, it, it it sort of makes sense that uh, you know like some of the some of the cooler places that are left are are uh, um, are, are in Oakland o- Oakland at this point. I'm bringing you into the new this new millennium, Andrew. <laughs> oh, thank you. Bob. I'm like the Gandhi. I appreciate it. I'm like the Gandhi of, of drinking in bars. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, did he do that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right, fine then. <laughs> <laughs> he was really into it. You know, Gandhi could really like put him away. <laughs> um, man, that's it. And this is our third third year. Uh, wow, I know, right? Like, How the time that's flies. Silly. <laughs> when do you think we're gonna go big time? Oh, I. <laughs> like, I'm sure once uh, once the reviews from the live show come back, like it'll yeah, you know, it it'll just uh, you know exponentially like uh, grow out of nowhere. Yeah, and also at the live show, we're gonna have uh, former favorite guest uh, Parker Gibbs, indeed, also DJ known Food Court, DJ Fo- Food Court. Right, he's gonna be DJing our show, and uh, we're gonna get to have a little like sort of he's gonna be our. Um, our Paul Schaefer, if you will. Our Paul Schaefer. I was thinking, who was the the first guy for uh, Jay Leno? <laughs> when, uh, uh, like Branford Marsalis, <laughs> yeah, like, like or, you know, the guy that they couldn't uh, get along yeah. with. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I and then they brought that. in like Kevin Eubanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like Winton Marsalis or something, wasn't it? It's like no, it was Brant. It was Br- Branford. Branford Marsalis. Wasn't right. it Branford? Yeah, it was Branford Whatever, Marsalis. Yeah. And then like they couldn't get along. <laughs> that or he was like, well, I'm, I'm, I think I'm better than this. Like, it's like hey, Branford I don't Marsalis really need to be like, like, wait a minute, I'm on a Jay Leno show. <laughs> what am I? Uh, uh, stay human, like if I can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any uh, plugs? Well, before we leave. Oh well, gosh. Aside uh, from uh, our show, aside uh, from our show, January twenty third at gosh. Piano Fight at four o'clock. Everyone's, I'm sure, uh, got their tickets already. Um, I mean, I guess I, I would, uh, I would certainly plug Benders because we're yeah. sitting at one of my favorite tables in Benders too, which is the, like, there's two, a, a couple tables that have like uh, confiscated like uh, driver's licenses. Uh, yeah, they say that embedded the, in the table, and it's great. Yeah, it's it's actually a really good art piece. Hey, here comes Kevin Montgomery. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, my yes, I want to say something about this bar. This bar is great. Yeah. Uh, I believe Eileen Murphy still does a karaoke. Okay. Uh, show here. Good for her. I can't remember which night it is, but like the very lovely Eileen Murphy does a uh, karaoke show here. Super. The food here seems to be okay. Right. And uh, they have uh, drink specials. Uh, Today is like Tequila Sunrise uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Indeed. Do you want to say anything before we sign off? Do you want to say anything 
about Blowfly that you're going to miss? Oh, that's right. Well, that's uh, that's the big one we've uh, we 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 missed on the uh, RIPs is uh, uh, Clarence, uh, who Clarence. I can't remember his last name. Blowfly to me. <laughs> exactly. But uh, I actually, uh, like a couple of years ago, I donated to the cause of saving uh, Blowfly's house. So if and anybody doesn't know. I got a t-shirt that said, I helped save Blowfly's house. And I will treasure it. If anybody doesn't know, ever. Blowfly is the, the raunchiest rapper of all time. Visit your library. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah, so I guess like you donated to some charity fund to help him get a, buy his house or something like right. that. When <laughs> really he promptly died. When you really should have been like buying him a new liver. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I should have. Oh well, uh, live and learn. What is your all right, before we sign off, what is your favorite like blowfly songs? <laughs> um uh, good question. Um uh, he has so many. <laughs> uh, I'm like stalling this, for time. Uh, spermy night in Georgia. <laughs> I'm sure that's one of them. <laughs> uh, I believe it's like a fuck of a lifetime, <laughs> which I believe like uh, uh, Jeffrey Osborne to cover it at some point. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think that was uh, written by James Taylor, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, like, you know, on the next episode, we'll do like a maybe a, maybe the live show. We'll have some Blowfly uh, memorial going. <laughs> That'll be great. So, so if you're a big Blowfly uh, fan, uh, come out. So do you think we could get DJ Food Court to ma- do a mashup of Bowie, Blowfly, Glenn Fry, and Lemmy <laughs> Kilmeister? <laughs> I think so. Can he, can he work like uh, Richard Libertini in there? Or like, I have no uh, idea who that is. <laughs> he uh, said Edwina back in bowl in the movie All of Me. Oh, and he played uh, Chevy Chase's boss in uh, Fletch. <laughs> Oh, I love that guy. I yeah, see. Oh, uh, no, I meant his, his lawyer is the guy I love. Uh, ah, oh, okay. The guy with the egghead. I think he died as well. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Every They're time I dead. turn around, someone's dead. That's right. All right, Andrew, we did it. The critics were wrong. We, uh, <laughs> we lasted three years. Somebody owes somebody money. Right. We'll prove them right next year when we last four years. And we'll see the rest of you, or most of or whoever wants to come, because it's exactly. a free show, right. at Sketchfest <laughs> this weekend. Indeed. And, uh, yeah, so uh, that, that's it. That's a wrap-up. Sweet. All right, I'm Jeff Cleary. I'm Andrew Louder. And we'll see you next time at the bar.